This is Go High Level Website Building 101, and in this video, we're gonna cover three main principles. First off, we're gonna cover basic website design principles so that you can get your websites looking absolutely fire. Secondly, we'll cover how to actually use the website builder and go high level efficiently and effectively. And third, we'll cover how to do SEO on your websites and optimize them for traffic and conversions. So the first design principle is visual hierarchy, which is making sure you arrange the elements on the page, like the text, the buttons, the images, in importance from most important down to least important. This will just make sure that website visitors are seeing the most most important stuff at the top of the page and if they don't scroll down they're not really missing out on super important stuff here's a good example of visual hierarchy where we have our more important elements at the top of the page and then as we scroll down it gets less and less important the further down we go we've got this video at the top which sparks an emotion in the viewer maybe this is for a couple's therapy clinic and we've got this video of this couple getting therapy from this therapist and so she kind of builds that emotion we've got this large headline which maybe is an important part of the business because this is the business's name a sub headline of what they offer you know a little bit more about the business the services that they offer their Google reviews down here to build authority. And so just making sure you have the most important key elements towards the top. And then as you go down, you can put a little bit and a little bit less important elements as you scroll down the page. They're all still important, right? But you want to make sure the thing that's going to get the person to convert on your website into a lead or a client is going to be towards the top of the page. Our second design principle is responsiveness and making sure that the buttons and everything on the website is actually working appropriately the way that you want it to. Before you publish any website, make sure to go through all the pages of your website that you've built out on both desktop and mobile. And and make sure it is responsive and working the way that you've designed it to. Here's an example of responsive design, just making sure the person can navigate through the website if they click the about page, making sure it takes them to the about page, they click back to home. And then if we were to inspect this, we right click, click inspect, and we were to check it out on mobile view, just making sure that the website looks good on mobile as well is really important. Make sure all the different fade effects and animations are also working on mobile. And so just making sure the website looks good on both desktop and mobile. So we can kind of switch and drag this out and make sure it would look good on all devices, you know, desktop, tablet, mobile, and just make sure it's optimized for all different devices. Our third principle is consistency, which is basically just having uniform fonts, colors, button styles, and spacing across the entire website. This is important for branding and just creating a seamless user experience for people visiting the website. Here's an example of a website that has good consistency. We've got our main font right here, which if you find any other main headlines, they will also have the same font. So just making sure the fonts are consistent. The sub headline fonts right here are consistent throughout and then the paragraph fonts are all the same throughout. If you find any paragraphs of text, they will have the same font. So they have three different fonts, right? But we're basing it off of the main headlines, the sub headlines and the paragraphs, as long as they're all the same throughout, then that's good. And then also this video box at the top here has this kind of rounded border down here. These cards right here also have the rounded border. The button is rounded. This image, you know, might be a little bit better if it was rounded to kind of match the rounded theme of these other boxes. And then the colors are obviously very uniform. We've got this green color, this tan color, and then this charcoal in the text. And right here in this background, just making sure the entire website has uniform fonts, colors, shapes, etc. Our fourth principle is spacing, just making sure the elements on the page are not too spaced out or too close together where it's hard to read or weird to read. Just making sure there's good spaces when they're supposed to be and not space when there's not supposed to be. Here's an example of a website that has good spacing. As we scroll down the page, we can see there's good space between this button afterwards. And before this text starts, it's an even space between this section and this section, which is very nice and appealing to the eye. As we scroll down, these boxes are all evenly spaced, so they're separated and easy to read. And then as we scroll down, we have even spaces between each section. When this button ends, we've got a good space there. And then when this new section starts with this new background, we've got an even space there before another image or another text element or whatever it is. And so just making sure your website is spaced out between different sections so that people can easily read and understand that a new section is starting and it's gonna talk about maybe something different in this business. Our fifth principle is website navigation, which is making sure our users can navigate through the website easily and seamlessly and making sure everybody has the same user experience on all devices. Here's an example of a website with a great user user centered design up at the top here, this dark text in the navigation menu stands out from the white background that it's on. Also this book appointment button also stands out really easy for the users of the site to go and find whatever they're looking for on the different pages of the site. We've got these call to action buttons that stand out, book an appointment, another one down here, learn more, and just making sure it's easily readable for the person, the client or the prospect coming to this website. Sometimes as a business owner, we want a website to look a certain way, um, but it's not always best for the people who are gonna be coming to the website. Just make sure to put yourself in their shoes 
and make sure you give them a good uh, user-centered experience when they're on the website um, so that they can easily navigate and find exactly what they're looking for super quickly. Our sixth principle is typography, making sure the text on our website is easily readable. Don't put dark text on a dark background, making it hard to read. Make sure everything's easily readable and the actual fonts you're using, make sure they're uniform throughout the entire site, picking one, two, or three max fonts throughout the entire site. Here's an awesome example of well thought out typography. We've got this main headline font right here that we'll see throughout the website and it's consistent throughout the site. That's one thing that's really important is making sure all the headlines, if you're using it in one place, they all need to have the same font as we go down the page. And then we've got these like the sub headline, which all the other sub headlines as we scroll down will also have that font. Looks like there's not any down here. Here's another one, just making sure they're all the same color and the same font if it's a sub headline. And then making sure all the paragraph text is also the same font as we scroll down the page. And sometimes it's okay to break the color rule. You can see this paragraph font is white. This one is kind of this brownish color. And that's okay because the cards, it'll look, you know, white looks better on this blue card. The brown looks better on this yellow card. So that's okay. But just making sure the fonts are the same. Pick three fonts and make sure to stay consistent to those fonts throughout. And then also kind of match the font to the vibe or the niche of the business. This is a vet template right here. And so it's for pets. And so it's good that they use this kind of more fun font that's not as like formal or strict but they used a more like fun, you know, friendly font uh, that looks a little bit more playful, which would kind of match the vibe of a vet. And so anyway, just staying true to your fonts and the colors a lot of times that you use in the fonts will make the website look a lot better. Number seven is color theory, which is making sure the color scheme of our website is consistent across all pages of the website. It matches our brand. And a great way to stay consistent to this is by using the 60, 30, 10 rule. 60% of our website should be one color. 30% of our website should be another color. And around 10% of our website should be another color. So pick three colors and stay consistent to that 60, 30, 10 rule. Here's a website example that uses color theory very well. We've got this kind of lighter blue color that also kind of matches the vibe of this logo up here. And so that would be like the main color. Maybe the 60% color is this light blue. And then we have this kind of like darker blue right here. It might even be a gray color. Could be our, you know, 30% color. And then we have this kind of blue that matches the logo up here, which might be our 10% color. And so using that 60, 30, 10 rule doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be exact. And you can always throw in pops of color like this pink in this image right here. But just making sure the images also kind of have the same color scheme of the actual background, you know, colors and different elements that you're using on the site. Um, just making sure the entire uh, color scheme is more uniform. Unless some niches, you know, you might have some crazy like weird colors going on. Um, but for most niches, you want to have a uniform site. It's just more visually appealing to the eye. Number eight is content layout. By content, we're talking about headlines, paragraphs, buttons, images, calendars, forms, any type of element that we can put on the page, making sure it's easy to scan and understand for the people visiting our website, and just making sure we're using columns and rows appropriately to space everything out. This website has great content layout. We've got the logo up here, which kind of stands out on its own to emphasize the brand and the business over on the right, nicely spaced out uh, navigation menu right here with a nice call to action button, which is book an appointment, which this business is trying to get people to do. Then we've got this image right here of this coach spaced out nicely from this paragraph and this headline text over here and this button. Um, we've got some words that are emphasized. Maybe these are some important keywords of this business that they're trying to highlight and emphasize. Then as we scroll down, we've got these nice three columns that are all separated, super easy to read. And then as we go down further, it's just a very nicely like spaced out and easy to read website, which is very, very important so that people don't get distracted and have way too much going on and they go crazy just trying to read your website and figure out what you do. Number nine is visual design and branding. We've hit on a lot of these principles already, but just making sure the design of the website reflects our brand and the niche of the business that we're making this website for. A website for a pet groomer is gonna be styled way differently than a website for a chiropractor. And so keep that in mind when you're designing and using certain elements on the site. This website for a photography business has great visual design and branding. Up at the top would be the logo of the business, which matches very nicely. It's kind of like a white and black logo logo. And so the entire theme of the website is matching the logo, just making sure it stays true to the theme and uh, just colors of this brand. And you can see maybe their type of photography, they do like this, like black and white photography. And that's a really cool style that they do specifically and specialize in specifically. And so they keep the website true to that brand, nicely spaced out, really nice visual designs, seeing some of the really good photography that they do and highlighting that. And so just making sure 
Their website matches the brand and the business, what they offer using appropriate fonts in that sense to match that vibe. Um, but yeah, this is a really good example of visual design and branding. And last but not least, number 10 is call to action. Just making sure the call to action buttons on our website that say book now or get started are prevalent throughout the entire website and easy to find for the people visiting the site. This website nicely demonstrates having a clear call to action. Up here at the top, this book now button is clearly the call to action. It's highlighted in green. It's on like a button. Everything else on the navigation menu does not have that background. And so this is the one we're trying to get people to go to as you hover over it. It even has this kind of hover effect. And then as we scroll down, we have this book now button here, also with the same effect in color as we keep going down, book now, book now. So it's very clear the call to action of this business is to try to get people to book an appointment with them. And that's how their business runs. It's a medical spa. They get people to come in for those medical spa appointments that they offer. And so just making sure that book now button is nicely kind of spaced out across the homepage, about page, contact page, which will eventually lead people to go to the book now page which will have the calendar of this business where people can book those appointments. If you're looking to sign up for Go High Level and start building out beautiful websites like the ones I've shown in this video so far, you can get a 30-day free trial with my affiliate link down below. If you sign up with my link, I'll jump on two free Zoom calls with you every week to help grow your business or agency, and I'll give you $10,000 of resources absolutely free. Included in those resources are all of the custom website templates that I've shown in this video so far, plus many more. And if you already use High Level, but you want to upgrade to the 297 or the 497 plan, you can also do that with my link down below and get the exact same free Free offer. First thing I'll mention about the high level website builder is you don't have to build off of a blank canvas. You can if you want to, but Go High Level has thousands of website templates that you can use as inspiration or kind of as a guideline to start your build. And I highly recommend using them. And there's also other templates out there provided by different affiliates or just different people that sell them. If you don't like the ones in the Go High Level template library, I have a bunch that I give away to my affiliates for free. But either way, there's a ton of templates out there that you can use and it just makes the design process a lot easier. So if you're looking to do that, you can go to where it says new website right here under the sites tab and then you can click from templates to see all of the go high level website templates that they have built out and they're always updating this library they've just hired on a lot of new people who are constantly building websites and funnel templates so you can choose from I'm, i think there's over a thousand website templates at this point and so you can keep scrolling down forever you can filter over here at the top left by niche and yeah find the template that you're looking for and you want to build off of um, maybe your client likes one of these. You could show these to your clients and say, hey, there's, these are some options available um, that we can build off of and kind of brand it to your own brand and customize it. Um, it's just a great way to also do outreach. If you're an agency owner doing outreach, trying to reach out to businesses to offer websites, you can take one of these templates, customize it a little bit, and then start reaching out to plumbers, for example, and say, hey, Mr. Plumber, we built you a website and wanted to see if we could show it to you on a quick Zoom call. So it's a great way to do outreach, showing people that you've already done some legwork for them before you even reach out to them, even though it's really just a template. And so anyway, you can choose from the template library here. I have a bunch of templates right here. And so I'm just gonna jump into one of them and we'll start showing you guys the website builder itself. So for example, I'll choose this chiropractor template that my website guy, Mike, built out for us. And at first you'll see the different pages of the website. If you're using a template, you'll see all the different pages of it. If you're building from scratch, so if you were going out here and you clicked new website and then you did from blank and you named the website, you'll only see one page, but Mike already built out all the pages of this website so we can see you know, all six of them right here. Um, if you don't see it, the pages, right? If you're just building from scratch, you'll just see like a main homepage. You can add pages to your website by clicking add new page and you can create new pages. Now, if there's a page that you really like, let's say you set up a homepage and you really like the design of it and you wanna replicate, and copy that design onto another page and then edit from there. You can duplicate pages um, by clicking right here and then you can click clone and you can clone a page. I could clone this home page right here and I could clone it here um, inside of this website and name it something different like about page. But basically you just click clone page in this website right here and then it would clone it and then you can rename it by clicking the three dots settings and then you can name it something else. It'll be like home clone by default but you could change it to the about page or contact or booking page, whatever you wanna call that page. And uh, so yeah, you can easily clone pages that you like the look of. You already have the design kind of laid out and you can paste it over to other pages on the site and start editing them from there, making the process of building these websites a lot faster and a lot more simple. But yeah, that's how to create and quickly edit the pages on your website. Now we're gonna jump into the actual website builder. We're gonna click on any page that we wanna edit and I'm gonna click edit right here and it'll open up into our website builder inside of high level. Now everything inside of high level is made up of sections, rows, and then inside of the rows, there are columns. So if you click the little plus sign up here, you'll see sections. 
which are basically these large green boxes here that I'm hovering over that make up just kind of like a background, right? This like kind of greenish background up here, this tan background is also a section. Sections can be different sizes and you can also make them different widths. So the lengths can be different and the widths can be different depending on the elements that are inside of the section. But the sections are these green boxes. You can see it's labeled section right here by my mouse. You can make a full width section, which will take up the entire length of the website. You can do a wide one that'll just take up a smaller width of the website. It won't take up the entire screen. You can do medium, make it kind of shrink in more small and then even smaller. You could select small right here and make it very like straight down the middle of the page when somebody's on desktop it'll look super narrow. So you can have different lengths of your columns. All of the columns you see here are full width because you can see they're taking up the entire width of the editor right here. But then inside of our sections, we then have these rows and rows can have one column, two columns, all the way till six columns. And so to show you an example, this would be like a one column row because there's just like one element right centered in the middle, which is this headline. But if we scroll down the page, boom, right here, this is a, is a row with three columns in it because we've got these three different cards right here that we can see spinal adjustments, pediatric chiropractic and sports inju inju injury rehabilitation cannot speak. And so that would be a, a, a triple row. So if you were up here and you were creating this row, this one would be a three columner and you can create these rows simply by clicking at the bottom of a new section and you can create the section first. So we can do another full width section right here. Then we can click add rows and we can just add a three columner, four column, six column, however many columns we want. If we know we're gonna create some sort of graphic like this one right here that has these three different cards that explain different services that we offer, then you could select the amount of columns that you're wanting to use there. And so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this so I don't mess with anything on this template. But yeah, that's how to create the sections and then the columns inside of the section. And then once you've created the section and the column inside of it, we can then add elements to it. So I guess I'll just go back down. I'll create that again, add a full width section. Let's do a two columner right here. So now we've got these two columns that we can add elements to. So elements are the next thing in the line here. And when we click, click this plus sign up here, we've got these elements and elements. There's a ton of different elements you can add inside of these sections and columns. We can add a headline. We can add a sub headline, a paragraph, a bulleted list, a button. So like a button like that looks like this, where it says book appointment, a form, a form that asks for somebody's name, email, and phone number, and they fill it out and they click submit a blog post, a category navigation. Um, we can do an image slider that'll slide between different images automatically, a video, an image, an FAQ, and uh, we can do custom code if we wanna add a custom coded element or our own custom CSS. We can do a survey, calendars, map, an SVG, uh, Google reviews widget, countdown timer, minute timer, day timer, navigation menu, navigation menu, is this at the top. So you probably wouldn't put a navigation menu halfway down the page, but this is the navigation up here that has like the home about contact us. And then if we scroll back down, we've got dividers. So we could add like a line divider at this point to kind of divide the page. Uh, we could do a progress bar, an image feature that has like an image with some paragraph text next to it that it describes the image, social media icons. Um, we could do a two-step order form, one-step order form, and an order confirmation if people, if we're selling some sort of products on our website. So all of these are different elements that Go High Level has natively integrated for us that we can add to these different sections. So if we wanted to do like maybe on this left side, we could add a headline of text below it. We could do a sub headline or a paragraph. Let's just do a paragraph. And then over here on the right, we could have an image. I think I skipped it. There it is. And then we could have this image on the right. So maybe we have this uh, headline talks about something about that relates to this image over here on the right. And I'll show you how to add these images um, in a minute. But yeah, that's how to kind of structure the pages with the sections, the columns, and then the elements that go inside of the columns. Any element that you add to your website, you can style it by selecting it. So I've selected this image right here. It's not an image yet, right? It says put your image here, but I can select this. And then over on the right, any element you select is where the styling will be found over here on this right panel. So we could select this headline, we could select this paragraph, and we can change different elements by selecting them first. And then over on the right will be the styling of these elements. So I can change this image right here by going over to the right. I've selected this image box and then I can click boom right here, this little image icon. And then I've got all these different um, images that I can add to this section right here. I can also click new upload and I can upload an image uh, from my computer that I have saved in my hard drive. I can just click new upload. Um, I'm gonna select this chiropractic template. I think I've got a folder of images already. So if I wanted to add, let's say this image right here of this guy's back getting checked out at a chiropractic clinic, I can just double click this image right here and then boom, it pasted in right there. 
then if I want to change the styling of this image, maybe the image needs to be like faded or something like that. So if we click advanced settings and then we go to like image radius, for example, we can make this image more of like a circular oval image or round corners, kind of make it more round um, image border. We could do like a dark border around it to kind of like make it pop a little bit more um, image shadow. We could do like black and white, which makes the image turn black and white. Um, and then we can do like a box shadow right here. Another cool thing is we can add animations to any element. So if we want this picture to fade in just like that, whenever somebody scrolls to it, we can make that fade effect or we can do it kind of fading up from the bottom or fading down from the top or from the left or from the right, etc. So there's all these different animation effects. If you just click on them, you can preview like what each one will look like when somebody scrolls to it on the website. But yeah, we have all these just native integrated elements or these animation elements um, and effects that we can add to any, any piece of uh, any element on the page. So if we click on this headline right here, we can also add an animation to this text, not just images, but also to the text, make it fade in when somebody scrolls down to this part of the page. Um, so yeah, adding animations will really up the quality and the look of the website and just make it look a lot more professional. It'll be more like eye catching and moving around when people scroll to it and scroll to just different parts of the website. On any given website, there are typically three main ways that we can capture leads. Those are through a chat widget, which is a little bubble that pops up in the bottom right corner. I'll just preview this site real quick. I'm going to delete all this stuff that I just added in because I don't think it looks very good and it's kind of repetitive because that picture is already right here. I'm going to go ahead and click save. Anytime you want to save your changes, just click save. And if your website is live and has a domain hooked up to it, you'll want to publish the website as well. I'm just going to click this little eyeball button and preview our site really quick so I can show you a few things on it. So this one does not currently have a chat widget, which is a little bubble that pops up down here at the bottom right. And it says, do you have any questions? You can ask us questions and somebody can submit a message through the little chat widget bubble at the bottom right. So the first thing I'll show you is how to integrate that chat widget onto a website. So we're gonna jump back into high level. We're gonna go back out of our website editor and that chat widget can be found up here at the top where it says chat widget. And then it looks like we've already got this default chat widget. I'm gonna select it. But if you were creating a chat widget from scratch, you would just click new up here. Um, we've already got one. It'll take you into a place like this where we can actually see what that chat widget looks like. So down here it says, you know, hi there, have a question, text us here. We click on it or the customer or the lead will click on it and then they can put in their name, phone number, email, and they can type out a message. And so we can customize this chat widget with all the styling over here. We can change the color of it. We can change the message and things and the picture right here. Anything you want to change, you can change over here in the styling. Once you've gotten the chat widget the right way that you want it, we can then just click save up here. Mine's already saved. I'm going to go back out of here. I'm going to go back to the websites tab. I'm going to find our chiropractic template here. And then I'm going to click on the settings right here up above all the pages. And then right here, it says chat widget. We can turn on our default chat widget. That was the name of the one that I was editing. And then we can go ahead and click save. Once that's saved, if we open up the actual website to edit it, the chat widget will not show up in editing view. You can see down here at the bottom right, it doesn't show up here. But if we do preview it, if we click the little eyelash button or the eyeball button up at the top right, now the chat widget pops up. So it only works in preview mode, only when the website is live. And so anyway, once you preview it, you can see that chat widget pops up. Now that's a great way for businesses to be able to capture leads through their site. It just gives a really quick way for somebody to send a message to this business. And anybody who messages here through this chat widget, it'll bring those leads into the conversations tab inside of high level. So it starts a conversation there and then we can text back and forth with them through the conversations tab with whatever question they had, we can go in and answer that. The next thing we can embed onto a website to capture leads is a simple contact form with which asks for name, email, phone number. We can do that under the forms tab here. We can go to builder and then we can create a custom form however we want it to look. So we've got this generic contact form I think is the one we'll be using on this website. And so it just looks like this asks for full name, email, phone number, a message if they want to send a message and then they click send. We can customize this. We can add our own fields to it. We could drag on, you know, if we want to ask for like their city, we can drag the city field. We can click on it and delete it if we don't want it anymore, which I'm going to do. And then we can style this form over here on the right by clicking these dots. And then we can change the fields to be like kind of next to each other. That looks pretty bad. Um, but yeah, lots of different styling options here. Themes you can choose from that are templatized and then Yep, thank you message, all that good stuff. Once you've edited the form the way that you want it, you'll go ahead and click save up here. Once that saves, we can then go back out. We can go back to our website and then we can go back down to our chiropractic template here that we were building out. 
and then we can go to the contact page because this is where we have that form already i'm going to click on it so it brings us into the website editor and it'll pull up the contact page specifically we've already got the form here but if you wanted to add that from scratch i'll show you how i'll just delete it real quick you'll add that uh this is a two column right here we can see this is one column this is another one right next to it and we can add that element inside of it we can select form and then we can select that generic contact form that we were just editing and then boom it pops up right there so that's how to add those forms to your website so you can capture leads in a second way so we've got the chat widget so far and then we've got the contact form that people can fill out with their information if they have inquiries or just want to talk to this business we'll go ahead and click save there and then the last thing we can do on a website if we click up here where it says pages i can switch over to our booking page just so i can show y'all we can add a calendar to our website it looks like there we go just took a minute to populate we can add a calendar like this so people coming and inquiring at our chiropractic clinic can actually book an appointment just straight through our website without even calling us messaging us or anything so we can add this third way to capture leads on the website so they can book their time and then whenever they book their time i'll preview it so i can show y'all what it looks like but after they pick their time then they'll have to put in their information in order to finish the booking so they could book for thursday at 8 a.m select that time and then they have to put in their first name last name email phone number and any additional information and then schedule a meeting so now we've, that's another way we can capture names emails and phone numbers from our leads and clients so to add this calendar right here we're going to jump back into high level we're going to click back we're going to go to the calendars tab and then under the calendars tab we're going to click, click calendar settings and then under calendar settings this is where we can create these calendars so you can simply create a calendar here I would do a, probably a service calendar for most businesses. And then once you've created that calendar, they'll show up right here, which I've got a couple right here. And then we can go back in to our website, websites tab, go into our chiropractor template. We will go to the booking page right here where that calendar is showing or where we want that calendar to show. And then right here under this make an appointment title, I'll just delete this one so I can show you how you would add it. You'll just have a single you know, column right here with an add element button. And then you'll go in and you'll click add and then calendar. We can select that. And then we can select that calendar that we just created. So we'll just click or select this booking one right here. I believe that's the one that was just on there. And then just like that, your calendar will populate. And now it gives you a way to capture leads through your website, through bookings, as well as the form and the chat widget. So those are our three top ways. One last way, something you can add to a website, it's called a survey. It'll ask a few questions and it's kind of like a form, but it'll kind of slide through. You can create those surveys right under here under the survey builder. I don't have any right now, but you can create a survey that kind of like asks one question at a time and they have to click the next arrow and it'll slide to the next question. So it's basically like a form, um, but that's another thing you can create here and you can add to the website. Um, so yeah, that's those are your four lead captures that we can add to any Go High Level website. The next thing you might be asking is how to add a blog to a website. Maybe your clients want a blog and they want to rank better in their SEO. And so you can actually create these blogs right here through Go High Level. You can click blogs and then this will take us to the blog creator, blog maker, and then we can click new and then we can create our blog site here. So we'll just, you know, I don't know, this one could be called like chiropractor since we're on the topic of chiropractic and then the domain slug would just be chiropractor and then we could type something about the overall blog we could say this is a blog about all things chiropractic a blog about all things chiropractic and then we'll just create the blog it might not let us create it here. We might need to add our domain right here. Um, we don't have any domains connected in this account. Boom, all right, there we go. It still created it for us. We can add that domain later. And now we're inside of our blog. So if we click back, we'll see from the main page here, we've created this chiropractor blog. We can go in, click on it. And now we can actually add the blogs to it, the actual like paragraphs of text with images and everything and create these blog pages that we can then put on our website. And I'll show you how to do that. We'll just create a quick blog post. The title of it will just be like something related to chiropractic. Just gonna type that out. Not sure if I'm spelling that right. We need to add an image. And so we're gonna go ahead, click change right here, and we'll go ahead to our chiropractic um, folder. And we'll just add this quick image of this lady holding her back. And then, you know, the alt text we would do would be like maybe back pain because she's like holding her lower back. And maybe this is a blog about like back pain. We'll just do back pain tips. That'd be a good blog for a chiropractic clinic to write. 
is just tips on back pain and then we'll you know this blog um, or we could just say learn how to get rid of your lower back pain and anytime you put the like keyword you're trying to rank for maybe this uh, chiropractic clinic is trying to rank for the keyword back pain you want to include that keyword in the description in the alt text in the title and so we'll go ahead and create this blog post that'll take us into the actual blog writer where you can write the blog it'll have this default blog here you'd obviously delete all of this write your blog paste it in here maybe use ChatGPT to write it and then once you've created it we can then just save it and continue if we want to publish it right away if we want to publish it we'll just hit continue and then the url slug is back pain tips which is perfect that'll be like the ending of our domain the canonical link we could put in the home page of the website right here so we just if our domain is you know chiropractor.com just put in the main domain here that's going to be the canonical link is where we want to basically send people back to after they read the blog and we want the seo to rank this page category it looks like we need to add a category first category maybe we categorize this one as like a chiro practor or practic tips just overall tips and then underneath the chiropractic tips category we have back pain tips and then we can change the image and go back to our chiropractic template here and maybe this is the image that we use for the overall category image and then we can do like chiropractic tips as our alt text that will describe this image and what this image is about we'll do chiropractic dash tips as our slug here and then learn tips on <laughs> chiro practic i don't know that's probably a bad category description but you get the idea we'll go ahead and create that category and then we can add this blog to the now the chiropractic tips category that we just created keywords you know maybe we're trying to rank for the keyword lower back pain and we hit enter and then we can add another one back pain and then um, we could do maybe chiropractors for back pain as our third keyword just a few keywords that we want to rank this blog for on google and then we can do the author's name we have to add another author as well i'm going to do myself change the image obviously i would pick an image of myself which i don't have one right here so i'm just going to add in this image right here doesn't really matter that'd be a picture of me the alt image uh, alt text would just be like jasper aiken to describe that the picture is of me author description you know blah 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 and then i'll go ahead and any links they have to their social media profiles and then create author now i can select jasper as the author of this blog and then we can publish this blog we'll just go ahead and publish it you can also schedule it out to go out on a certain day a certain time of day um, but we'll just publish it right now and then the date today is the 14th so that's the date that we published this blog and then we'll go ahead and save the blog all right now that we've created the blog we can add it to our website now so we do this through the sites tab we'll go to websites we'll go to our chiropractor template here we would probably want to create a whole new page just for blogs on our website and so what i'll do is i'll just like copy this terms and conditions page i'll clone it and show you how that works um, we'll select clone page in this website and now we'll have two terms and conditions pages one will say terms and conditions clone i can go in i'll click settings i'll change this to say blogs and then the slug or the path here will do blogs on the end update it so now we've got this blogs page which will have a bunch of terms and conditions on it which i'm going to delete i'll show you we'll go in and click edit then i would go through here and just delete all the terms and conditions one by one and we'll go through delete them we can kind of clear this page for our blog and anyway you get the gist of it i well i'm almost done i'll go ahead and just finish up deleting these boom all right so now we've cleared that out we could delete all these sections we don't really need all of them but now we can add an element and that element we're going to select blog posts it'll look like this so it's best if you have a few blogs um, ours will only have one blog in it because we've only published one of them so far uh, but now we're over here we're going to select that blog site we're going to select chiropractor the one we just created and then the category is going to be chiropractic tips that's also the category we created there and then um, we'll just do like recent posts right here and then we should be able to save this I don't think it'll show it here in the editor but if we go to a live preview it, we should see a thumbnail of our blog here boom there we go and we would rename this obviously as well we would call this like 
blogs or chiropractic blogs or something like that. Chiropractic blogs. There we go. Save it again. I'll open up a new preview of it. So now we've got our chiropractic blogs page and you would sh it would show all three of the blogs and multiple of them if there are more of them, but we can just select right here back pain tips and then boom, it'll open up the actual blog page um, to the actual like back pain blog that we wrote, which this isn't actually it, but if you were to write it, it would open up right there and that'll help with SEO on your websites for yourself or for your clients. Back inside of our website editor, we can create what are called global sections, which are sections that we can make global. So if we change, let's say this section up here on the homepage, it'll then change that same section on all other pages of the website. Now you need to make sure to make a global section global before you create it or add it to any other pages of the website. But to create a global section, if you click the plus sign here, you'll see right here, there's global sections, this apart or this tab right here. We don't have any right now. But if we were just, we just finished creating this homepage and we wanted to make this whole green box right here with the everything inside of it, a global section, because we want to include this um, navigation up here on every single page of the website, which is pretty typical. You'd want to do that. You'll go over and you'll hover over the green section. You'll click this little uh, save looking button right here. We can name this section. We can call it header. Looks like I got my cap locks on. So we could call it header because that's like the header of our website, right? And then we can add it to global sections. We can go ahead and save that. And then if we are on another page of our website, we, these pages will already have this section. Um, let's go ahead and click save real quick before we do that. All right, now we can switch over to any other page of the site like the about page. And we can use again, this global section up here. So this global section, I mean, this one looks slightly different. It has a different background than the home page. So let me go to like maybe a different page, contact us. Let's see if this one looks the same. All right, so here, this one looks the same. So we'd wanna use it here on this contact page as well. We already saved it as a global section. So now all we have to do is click here, go to global sections, and then we can simply just drag it out onto the page and we can just copy it just like that. Any changes you make to this will also change back on the home page. So just keep that in mind. If you change it on the home page, it'll change here, vice versa. But we already have it obviously, so I'll just go ahead and delete that. But that's how to add those global sections. You can also do the same thing with the normal um, section templates. Now the section templates, the only difference between a section template and a global section is that the section templates will not change. Like if we change this global section here, it would also change on the home page, all other pages that we've added that global section to. So it'll change anything we change inside of it, but the templates will not. So if we just want something that's like, we just want to copy it to one other page and we want to edit it slightly, then we would make it a template. So I'll go back, let's say to our home page. I'm gonna have to save real quick. We'll jump back into our home page of our site by clicking this pages button and then switching back to home. So once we're in the home page, I'm gonna find an element. Maybe it's uh, this section right here. Maybe we, I like this section, this green one right here, and I wanna copy this section to another page, but then I wanna change something on it, but I don't want it to change here. That's when I would create a template. So I'll click here, this little save button. I'll name this one. We'll just call it like comprehensive care because that's like the title that says here and then we can make this one a template we'll go ahead and save it now that we've created and added this as a template if we click here we go to templates we'll see that we just added that template should be somewhere down here down at, down at the bottom we've got a lot already saved in here and this just makes editing faster right and then we can go over to a you know the booking page if we wanted to add that big section there on the booking page but change a few things on it we could go down here we can click the plus sign section templates and then we can drag this one right here and then boom, it'll copy over from the homepage. But now I can edit this one. I could change the text here. I could change what these cards say and it wouldn't change on the homepage. So that's the difference between the section templates and then the global sections. The global sections, if I had done a global section for this, if I changed it here, it would also change on the homepage. It'll change on all of the other pages. But if it's a template, it'll only change um, on the page that you're actually editing on. But it's nice to be able to templatize things and just copy them over to other pages, which makes editing very fast. Next up, we're gonna cover what is called padding and margin. So we have all these sections, right? And some of them are shorter and smaller, some of them are taller, and a lot of it depends on the elements that are inside of it. But as well, we can shrink a section or make a section taller if we use margin and padding. So you can select any section here. Let's select this blue box right here with these cards in it. And let's say I wanted a little bit more space underneath this card between the text right here and where these the bottom of these cards are at. We can select this blue box right here and go over to the right. And right now you can see the padding is 15, 
we can up this padding by clicking on it and we can drag it out and it'll create more padding and space between this text that's down below it. Whatever section is down below, it'll create space between the two of them. And so you can mess with padding, you can mess with the margin, which is up here, which margin and padding, they're basically the same thing, um, but you can just get extra padding if you do it on the padding. And then also if you go down to margin, you can make the margin larger. They're basically the same thing. I'm just gonna put them back to where they were at before back to 15 there we go and yeah you can do that with any elements on the page even inside of this card here if i wanted this chair right here to be spaced out further from where it says pediatric chiropractic i can select any element and i can change that padding and margin and i can also do it on the left and right side so if i wanted these cards like i could select this this card right here the purple box right here and i could change i could add padding to the left of it and it would kind of like basically make the card larger it looks like in that case i'm going to go back i don't like that change we could do margin maybe if we want it to be spaced out further and not actually drag the box. That would actually space it out like the boxes themselves and create a larger space between the two of them. And so you can play around with margin and padding to get the perfect spacing between um, your elements and everything that's on the page. And one other thing to mention is to go into mobile view and make sure the spacing looks good in mobile as well. Because any changes you make on desktop, you'll want to make sure to switch over to mobile and just make sure the padding looks good here because it doesn't always look great on mobile but it might look great on desktop. And so just make sure to check between the two of them. Continuing on the topic of desktop and mobile view, always make sure when you make a change on desktop that it looks good on mobile. Mobile is really important because the majority of website visitors will actually come through mobile nowadays more so than desktop. And so mobile is really, really important. Everybody's on their phones. So if you have an element, let's say this video right here looks great on desktop but maybe it doesn't look so great on mobile. I think it looks great on mobile, but just as an example, right? We can actually hide elements from mobile that are on desktop. So we could select this video box right here, this blue box. Over on the right, we can click advanced settings in our styling. And then down here, the visibility, we could hide this element on mobile so that we can't see it on mobile, but we still can see it on desktop. And so you can go through and any elements that look great on desktop or look great on mobile or vice versa, you can hide between the different views so that they don't show up and look bad on one or the other. Next thing I'll show you how to add is a pop-up. We can click up here where it says pop-up settings and a pop-up is basically just exactly what it is, a, a pop-up that pops up with some sort of form or maybe we give a discount or just something that pop -ups, pops up in front of the person on the website after a certain amount of time being on the website or we can make it pop up after they click a certain button on our website. And so we'll just click add row right here and then we can add a single column and then we can add an element. So let's say we're doing some sort of discount offer. We could do a headline and it could say like, claim 50% off your next appointment. And then we could add below that by clicking the little arrow or the little plus sign under this orange box. And we could add a form and then we could select, maybe we'll have like some sort of, you know, offer form here that we've created for this, this 50% off or their next appointment offer. And then we can click where it says pop-up settings. And then over on the right, we can style this pop-up just like we can style everything else inside of the website builder. We can go into the advanced settings and change the border. You know, maybe I just want like no border. So it takes that gray away. I think that looks a little bit better. And uh, yeah, you can change almost anything over here in the styling. We can also say what we want to show the pop-up on. So this one right here by default is selected. If they're exiting the website, it'll pop up. And so maybe we have it on like a delay and then we could have the pop-up come up after like maybe 60 seconds of them on the website. We can also change the width of the pop-up, make it larger, make it smaller, etc. And then we can also close pop-up on clicking outside. So if the person clicks outside of the pop-up, we can make it close there. Um, we can disable the pop-up if we don't want it to show up here um, when people are on the site, because maybe it's getting like really annoying and people have complained about it. Um, but yeah, you can change any of the pop-up settings there. And you can also make buttons trigger the pop-up as well. So if we click out of the pop-up here, we've already added it in up there. When we click on it, you'll see it pop up again there. We can make this like book appointment button. Let's say we wanted this book appointment button to open the pop-up for some reason. We can click this button. We can scroll down to the bottom to where it says button actions. And then instead of go to page, we can have this button open our pop-up. So we'll just select right there, open pop-up. Right now it'll take them to the appointment page, which is probably what we would want it to do, right? Cause it says book appointment. But if we really, if we wanted it to give some sort of 50% off discount, or we said claim a discount right here, instead of book an appointment, we could have it open that pop-up and then they fill in the form to claim that 50% off discount. So anyway, that's how you change uh, or edit the pop-up and you can create buttons or delays or have different settings for the pop-up of when it actually pops up. 
and tries to capture somebody's attention. And lastly, if you want to add any custom coded elements to the websites as you're building them out, let's say Go High Level doesn't have a specific thing that you want to add, one of these elements here, um, but you want to embed it from another software that you use or just some regular custom CSS code, you can do that by selecting right here. You can add code blocks onto the website anywhere you want to and you can add the code over here on the right by opening up the code editor. So you can add specifically coded elements that maybe aren't native to Go High Level and style different elements certain ways that Go High Level doesn't have available. Um, you can also add code to the overall website or the overall pages of the website by clicking up here where it says preview custom codes, or sorry, it'll actually be under custom because this little paintbrush right here. And then you can add in your code if you want something to be coded for the entire page, um, you can add it inside of this custom CSS box right here and add your own custom code if you're a developer and know how to use it. Once you finish building out your website for yourself or for your client, and now you wanna connect a domain to it so that it's actually live on the web, we can do that here inside of High Level through the settings down here at the bottom left inside of the account that we created the website in. And then we can go down to where it says domains right here. And then inside of the domains tab, we can add our own domains. First, you'll need to buy the domain through GoDaddy, Cloudflare, Namecheap, HostGator. There's a lot of different places that provide domains where you can buy them from. Most domains are like $15 to $20 per year, so they're pretty cheap. And then we can click add domain right here once we've purchased our domain. We can simply type in the domain name, which I don't think I have one here, but I'll just type in um, you know, webjuice.io. And then we can click continue and it'll sync up and find wherever we bought our domain with. For me, it was probably GoDaddy for this domain, and it'll automatically sync up, like just like I told you, with GoDaddy right here, and then I can click Authorize Domain. It'll then ask me to log into my GoDaddy account, and then once I log into my GoDaddy account, it'll then sync up my domain into Go High Level, so then I can use that domain with uh, my website that I just built out. And once you connect the domain, it looks like I can't do it because I've already added this domain in, in another account and I'm using it somewhere else. But once you add that domain, it'll then ask you which website you want to connect the domain to and you'll just select the website that you just built out inside of high level, whatever you named it, it'll pop up there from a drop down. you can select it and then it'll connect your domain to your website and then it'll be live. It's a really simple process. You'll just have to go through here, authorize the domain and just set up that process and your website will be live and ready to search up. Now that we know how to make our websites look good and we know how to use the high level website builder, we're now gonna jump into optimizing our websites for SEO and also optimizing them for converting leads that land on the website. Right now I'm inside of a software called Search Atlas, which is an SEO tool that I use to optimize all of my clients' websites and my own website. And so right here is this keyword tool that we can use. So whatever your clients, or if this is your website, whatever niche you're in and whatever keywords you're trying to rank for, you can go ahead and type your niche in right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in medical spa for this example we're going to pretend we have a medical spa client and then we're going to click search right here this will pull up a report of this specific keyword the keyword medical spa which will give us some other related keywords that we can then use and we can kind of do some research on and figure out if they're hard to rank for or easy to rank for and we can figure out our keyword difficulty and then we can create our strategy on how we're going to implement these keywords onto our website for ourselves or for our client so right now this keyword medical spa has an easy keyword difficulty it's probably because medical spas are kind of a newer thing there's probably not a ton of medical spas across the country yet in the us at least and so it's it's a relatively easy keyword to rank for nine out of 100 is very simple and very easy this keyword gets 165,000 monthly searches um, in the US alone, which is pretty solid. And then if we scroll down here, we can see a bunch of other related keywords that are similar to medical spa. And we can go in here, we can click view all 1.3 thousand keywords, and it'll give us a list of maybe some other keywords that we can include on our website. All right, so right here we can see this keyword med spa gets 165,000 monthly searches. The keyword difficulty, which is this KD right here, um, it's, it seems like all the keywords are relatively easy to rank for, except for this keyword, Upkeep Med Spa, for whatever reason, has a 90 keyword difficulty. So that might be a big Med Spa brand or something like that. But pretty much all of the keywords related to Med Spa are like super easy to rank for, which is very rare. You're not going to find this in many niches with this many keywords that are super easy to rank like this. But really, this kind of gives us an idea of the keywords we want to use for a different niche. You know, if we were typing in plumber or something, there would be a lot more keyword difficulty because plumbing businesses have been around for years and years. 
Medical spas, like I said, are, they're kind of a newer niche. And so that's probably why there's so many easy keywords to rank for. But that's good for us because that means we can really use any of these different keywords um, and we can include them on our site, which makes it really easy for ranking our clients on Google. And so anyway, just kind of take a look at the keywords. We're going to try to go after the ones that have lesser keyword difficulty um, and looks like pretty much all of them. So we could really pick from any of these that we want to rank for. So we can include the keyword med spa, medical spa, you know, Let's see, advanced aesthetics, maybe if that's a, one of the types of appointments that we offer, um, or you know, Botox might be down here somewhere. We might have to do a completely separate keyword search up here for like Botox for some of the very specific services that they offer, but that could be a good one to go after. Maybe that's something a lot of people are typing in on Google. So you wanna go after ones that are easy keyword difficulty, but are also getting high search volume. So these top ones right here would probably be the best ones to then take over to our website and then use those kind of keywords in the headlines throughout the sub headlines in the paragraphs all across the site so that Google can read what our website is about. And so we would just take some of these keywords, jump into high level, you know, jump into our medical spa template. Let's see if I have one here on this second page, here it is. And then we can go into the website editor here and we can optimize our on-page SEO for these specific keywords. So we can make sure to include, there it is, you know, the keyword med spa. If it's also a med spa and salon, make sure to include that as well. You know, make sure to include that keyword in the paragraph here of text so that Google can read and know exactly what our website is about and rank us according to those keywords. And then inside of the SEO metadata, which is right here, you click this little button. This is where we can do some backend type SEO on our website and go high level. So we can go to right here where it says content. We can title our website. Typically you'll put the name of the business. So this one would be like, looks like our logo says Dr. Skin. So it'd be like Dr. Skin. Med Spa. You want to include the keyword if appropriate in the title of the website. The description, you also want to include a description that includes the keywords you're trying to rank for. Um, you could say Med Spa located in, and it's also good to put your location so Google knows where you're located and can rank you in your local area. We could say located in, um, you know, Tampa, Florida, um, specializing in Botox and IV therapy or something like that. Maybe those are the two main services that this medical spa offers that they're trying to rank for. Those are like their best services that they get paid the most for. So those are the ones we want to rank for. And then we can just period there. And then under the keywords, we can actually set, put in our keywords and kind of enrich this section with the keywords we're trying to rank for. So we could do like med spa and you just separate them by commas, medical uh, spa. And then maybe we do like Botox um, IV therapy. And then, you know, you can do a few more, you can do like, I think up to 10 keywords in this section right here. So make sure to put in all the keywords you and your, or your client are trying to rank for right here. The author, you would just put the name of the business owner. So I'm just going to put in my name right here. And then let me move myself out of the way right here. Social, social image. This would be good to put like your logo, um, or maybe a picture of your team or something like that. This can pop up in the search results as well and uh, can show up on Google images. So just make sure to select your image here. I'm gonna go to our med spa pictures here and I'll just choose from this logo right here, this Dr. Skin logo. And so we have Im implemented that there. It just shows the link, but it will show up up here at the top. And that's kind of like what our preview of our site will look like um, on Google in our map pack. And then links and tags, canonical links though, these are good ones to add in. So canonical link, is basically we're telling Google the main pages of our website that we're trying to get ranked. So we might have off pages of our website, like some blog pages, or we might have like this booking page, but the main pages that we're trying to get ranked might be like the home page, the about page and the contact page, maybe because those are the pages that do the converting or maybe just the home page, about page, contact and book now pages. We might have some other pages, like I said, like we might be writing blogs, which will be separate pages from these main four, but we can use these main four as our canonical links that any anytime we're trying to rank a blog, it'll basically boost the SEO of all these other pages too that are connected to the blog. So just put in the main pages of your website here. So for this one, we would do like HTTPS backslash backslash, and then we would do like drskin.com. That's our domain name. And then, you know, we would, that would be the main site. That'd be the homepage. So we can add that one in. And then we would go here and we'd add the next one, HTTPS. And then we would do drskin.com dot com backslash about for the about page and we would do each one just like that let me do one more https backslash backslash and then we would do drskin.com backslash contact that's our contact page so just put in the links to the specific canonical pages that you're trying to get ranked 
and that'll boost the SEO for those pages, even if your SEO is optimized on a blog page or something like that. So anyway, you can add those canonical links there. And then after that, we will wanna add some meta tags in there. I skipped this part, but we'll go ahead and click add. A uh, meta tag is basically, it says, a meta tag helps search engines understand what a website's about, making it more likely to show up in search results and be found by people. And so we'll just click add right here and you can name a meta tag. Like we could just name this one like med spa. And then the actual content would just be whatever keywords you're trying to rank for. So that we just call it med spa, med spa. And then you can just do that over and over again with the keywords, medical spa. This will actually put code on the back end of the website in the HTML, which Google will crawl and look at every couple of weeks once it indexes your website. And it'll show um, these in the back end of the HTML of the website so that Google can read and see that these are the keywords included and it'll rank you for these keywords. So we'll just do medical spa for this one. And then we can do whatever other keywords we want to add right there as well, but you guys get the gist of it. And so put, you know, probably five to 10 keywords in there of different, you know, niches you're trying to rank for keywords or services that you offer, et cetera. And then down here at the bottom, you'll want to select the language. We'll just typically do English, but if you speak a different language or your website is for a business in a different language, make sure to select that language right there. But then once you've added all of this stuff in right here and everything looks good, you're just going to click update SEO metadata. And you need to do this on every single page of the website. It'll only update this one for the homepage since we're on the homepage right now but just make sure you do it for the about page, contact page, all the other pages of the site. Make sure to hit update. I don't think I hit update there, so it probably didn't save anything. Yeah, it looks like you didn't save anything, but just make sure to hit update SEO metadata and it'll save all of those changes in and do that per page of the website. So for all four of our pages here, we'd wanna do, or we'd wanna update this SEO metadata. Now, another great way to do SEO for websites, it's a brand new thing and it's called uh, auto. It's an AI pixel provided by this company here that I use for SEO. And it basically is a pixel that you can install on any website and it'll do SEO on the back end of the website completely on autopilot using AI. Up here, if you're using Search Atlas, which you can get a 14 day free trial of down below with my affiliate link. And if you need help, I can help you set it up if you guys can't figure it out, but I'm gonna show you real quick how to do it in this video. Um, but here you can click auto SEO V2 and then you can click create right here. And basically you can take the websites that you've run audits on. So first you would need to go into the site audit tab here, run a site audit on your website or your client's website, which then they'll show up right here. It'll show the health of the website, a few different you know, things like how many pages they have, et cetera. Once you've run that quick site audit and once that's populated, then you can go in and you can add to the site your pixel and it'll do the AI, like I said, on autopilot. It's crazy what this is doing. It's insane. And so I'm just gonna show you a brief overview. I've got a full video walkthrough of how to use this tool. But basically I'll just select this uh, one right here and, or I'll do this one. We'll hit continue. We'll put in a little bit of information about this business. And once we do that, it'll then spit off this code right here. And we can copy, this is the pixel that I'm talking about that we can install on the website. So we will just copy this code right here. Then we jump into high level to our website, click back out of here. We'll go into the settings of our website and then we'll paste that pixel into the head tracking code of our site, just like that. Save it. Once you've saved it, we can then go in and um, basically just click this again and we can see that our auto pixel has been installed right now. Obviously I didn't save it in there, so it's not installed correctly. But if I jump back to another one of my client's websites, we'll just jump back to jump into this one. You can see it'll show you the site score, the health score. Usually they'll be like in the red, be really bad out of a hundred, you know, 10 out of a hundred, 20 out of 100, whatever the score is to start. And then all you have to do is click enable here on the auto SEO that it's engaged, just enable it. And then once you've enabled it, all you have to do every like once a month or twice a month, maybe just go in and click deploy all. And it deploys all of these SEO updates that it recommends using AI. It's crawling the website, figuring out how it can improve the SEO. And it's updating the SEO on the back end of the website. It doesn't change anything physically on the actual pages of the website here, like on the you know, homepage or the about page. It's not changing anything physically on the site. It's just going through and making backend changes to the website. You can also integrate this tool with Google business profile and it'll update and help you rank better with your Google business profile for local businesses and it integrates with your Google search console. And so those are just a few ways to do SEO for the on-page stuff. And then this tool right here, auto SEO, which starts at $99 a month. It does all of the backend SEO completely on autopilot, making SEO, which is usually a pretty complex skill, super easy for somebody even like me who's a dummy with SEO. And you can get your clients or your own website ranked super fast using this tool because it uses 
AI and it makes the changes immediately and it's super accurate. You can see the changes that I deployed on here saved me 10 days, two hours and five minutes of time that it would have taken me to do it manually, but the AI has done it for us on our website and optimized it for this client of mine right here. So anyway, that's the SEO stuff. Next up, we're gonna cover the actual optimization of the website itself so that you can convert more leads. And the first step in optimizing your website for conversions is having a clear value proposition. You wanna tell your leads exactly why you are the right business for them to work with them, whatever the niche is, whatever the offer is, make sure to include that offer and why that offer is for them and why it will help them and benefit them and make sure it's very focused on how it's gonna help them and not about all the bells and whistles and all the cool stuff that you can do, but showing what the client is gonna get as an end result of going through your services. Make sure to speak to them and what they're gonna get out of it. The next step is having a clear call to action. You wanna make sure it's very clear exactly what you're trying to get these customers to do. In this case, for this website, it is book now. You can see book now, this button as you scroll down, it's many times throughout the page. And so we are trying to get people to book directly onto the booking page of our website where they can book on our calendar and schedule a service with this pet grooming business. And so just make sure you have a very clear call to action of of what it is exactly that you're trying to get people to do. So there's no ambiguity there. You, they know exactly what it is you're trying to offer them. Next up is making sure your website is optimized for mobile phones because mobile phones are the number one used device to look up websites now. And so just making sure if you go and inspect this website here on desktop, that it also looks good in mobile right here because if you don't have a good mobile view, that's gonna kill your conversions. Like I said, the majority of people are using their phone to search up your website. They're probably going through Google Maps or Google Organic Search, finding your site. And if it doesn't look good on mobile and it doesn't have you know, clear calls to action on mobile. Um, one thing to mention with this as well is making sure the call to action and everything you want them to know right off the bat is before the page fold. So on mobile, before they even can scroll down, you wanna make sure everything is explained there because if they don't scroll down, then you, you'll lose them. And so you wanna make sure everything at the top is there and you also have like a button or some sort of call to action towards the top of the website. Next up, make sure your website is easy to navigate for the leads and clients that are on the site. Make sure this navigation menu up here is super simple. You don't wanna have a million different pages. People will get um, information overload or analysis paralysis. They'll have way too many options to choose from to check out different things about your site. But if you just have like three or four, maybe five max pages up here that people can go through to check out your business, see what you're about, it'll help convert a lot more leads. The next thing is you wanna make sure all pages of your website are optimized, not just the homepage. The homepage is definitely one of the more important pages. That's the one most people will land on and see first. But if they switch into the about page, you also wanna make sure the about page has clear calls to action as people scroll down the page and, and also has these buttons that people can click on to book an appointment if that's the uh, clear call to action of the business. Same with the contact page, make sure there's some way to always capture the lead all throughout the website, no matter what page they're on. This page has this form. The booking page has the calendar. So just make sure every page is optimized and has everything else we've covered in this section um, on all pages of the site. Another thing that's very important for converting leads on your website is having what are called trust signals, which are basically just reviews or testimonials that you can get from previous clients that you've worked with in your business. You can throw them on your website so that it'll build trust from other people that are checking out your website. They'll see these reviews from other people that have had a great experience working with you and they'll be much more likely to convert. You can throw these all throughout the website just to help boost your conversions. And another form of trust signals you can put on the website are these bios of the different employees that work for the business and a, a headshot of them so that whenever leads come to the website, they can see the actual employees that work for this business. They can read a little bit more about what they are and their experience and what they're into. Maybe just find different ways that the leads can actually connect with the real people that work for the business. That'll help boost conversions as well. Something else that will hurt conversions on your website like no other is slow page speed. If people are on your website and when they click between pages, it's loading really slow, they're gonna click off your website and find the next business that has a faster load speed. And so this also hurts with your SEO as well if your website loads really slow. One way you can check your load speed is by copying the link of your website. I'm just gonna copy this preview link, but you would just copy the actual live website link of, for your own website or for your client. And then you'll go over to this tool called pagespeed.web dot dev and it's free to use you can paste in any website right here and then you can click analyze and it will analyze how good the page load speed is of your website any performance speed above 60 is seen as pretty good there are a few things you can do if your page speed is below 60 right here in this performance score you can um, shrink down your images on your site and compress them into smaller file sizes that's a big one that'll slow down the load speed of your website another one is also compressing the video files making the videos shorter if you have really long videos on your site just making sure to kind of compress all the different elements down down, like images, videos, any um, graphics that you're using on the site, making them as small as possible, not actually in size,
size, but just small file sizes so that the load speed will go faster. I appreciate y'all a ton for staying tuned to the end of the video. If you guys want to sign up for high level, you can get a 30 day free trial with my affiliate link down below. If you use my link, I'll jump on two free Zoom calls with you every week to help scale your business or agency. And I'll give you over $10,000 worth of resources absolutely free. Earlier in this video, I also mentioned the new auto AI SEO pixel that does SEO completely on autopilot for your client's websites or for your website. You guys can get a 14 day free trial of that down below with my affiliate link as well. And if you need help setting that up, I'll jump on a call with you and help you set it up completely free. And if you're just starting out in your agency and you need some guidance, you can join my free school community down below. It's called High Level Quest. It has my new free course in it that shows you how to build websites and offer software to service-based businesses. And it's just a great place to rub shoulders with other people who are also growing their agencies using the High Level software and Search Atlas. Appreciate y'all a ton. I love y'all and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.